Uh, so my name's Em. I'm the manager here at Doe Bondi. Um, my name's Maddie. I run my own business here in Sydney called Maddie's Dog School. Um, I run the puppy school here for Doe. With puppies um, and with you know, new dogs or dogs that are a little bit anxious with grooming, there are a few things you can do to, to help them out. Um, a lot of dogs and puppies are quite sensitive to handling, so, um, you know, might be a little bit shy, particularly about their paws being touched. So one really great way to build a bond um, and also desensitize them to the type of close handling that is needed for grooming um, is actually simply through massage. So massaging their paws, touching their claws, and trying to do this when they're in a nice, tired and relaxed mood. Um, you know, you want to be giving your dog nice, long, relaxing strokes, and then working your way down their body to them touching their toes. You also want to Make sure that you're handling the dog's ears. So lifting those ears up and inspecting them because when they're at the groomer, the groomer will be lifting up those ears, cleaning them out with cotton buds, and you want to make sure that your dog or your puppy is used to having that kind of handling with a familiar person, um, with their owner, and then they'll be much more confident when they have their groomer um, handling them when they're in a much more distracting and you know sometimes stressful environment because there's so much happening. Um, so if you practice these things at home, then you're gonna have a much more confident dog. Making sure that when you're handling your dog, you're sort of always working your way from the chest and the shoulders and then down to their other body parts. Um, gently handling those paws, getting them used to that touch for a short period of time, lifting those ears. And also one thing that people often don't think about is um, restraint. So when dogs are either at the vet or they're at the groomer, um, if they're having uh, nail clipping, for example, um, the groomers will need to often restrain the dog. And it's quite, um, you know, it can be quite stressful for your dog having a complete stranger having to hold them quite close and quite tight. So practice at home, maybe get them um, onto a table or a stool or something where they're off the ground. So it's more similar to when they're at a groomer and just practice those short little exercises of restraint around the body like that and then touching the feet at the same time. Because um, quite often it is actually the restraint um, that freaks the dogs out a little bit if they're not used to being held that closely. So just prepare them for their trip at the groomer by practicing these things at home, using lots of treats. Um, one obviously great thing to do to build up that positive association is give them long lasting chews. So give them a pig's ear, keep them occupied while you're doing that gentle massage of their body so that they're focusing on something they love while you're doing something that maybe they're a little bit uncomfortable with and build up their confidence that way. Um, you could also use like a bully stick or the venison shanks. Um, and they will keep your dog occupied for quite some time while you're doing that sort of thing. A lot of dogs are not super confident in the bath. Um, you know, so to prepare them at home, we recommend you can do it in a bucket. You can so, do it in a bucket. Let them get their paws wet, hop in and out so that they're not pressured to be in that one spot. They've got the choice to come in and um, you know participate, but they also have the choice to leave as well so that they feel a bit safer. By putting it on the ground and letting them get in and out a few times using lots of treats um, will help them feel more comfortable. So a tip with home grooming and washing, we know it's really difficult to do. I mean, we've got big hydro baths here, we've got restraint, it's a lot easier for us and we know it's hard at home at the moment with isolation. So um, with the bucket, what we recommend doing is filling it up with some nice warm water um, and actually putting your shampoo and your conditioner into the bucket of water rather than all over the dog. Uh, this will allow- Shampoo first, yes. conditioner up. Yes, of course. Um, this will allow more of the soap and the conditioner to soak into the dog's fur from home um, when you don't have the same tools that we do here at the grooming salon. Um, with your shampoos and conditioners, I mean, we've got different ranges that you can get. Um, there's our own Neem brand, which is fantastic, but um, whatever you have access to is great. We just do recommend as many natural sort of products as you can. So make sure when you're looking for home shampoos and conditioners, they are all natural ingredients. Um, and another trick is you don't need to use a lot. 
people tend to lather their dogs in the shampoo and all of a sudden uh, your shampoo is gone within two washes. So um, a tiny bit in the bucket. And what is the most important in washing your dog is the bubbles. So you really want to form those bubbles in the bath and use those bubbles then to actually wash the dog. And you can, you know, particularly if you have a large breed dog, I should add, um, go and buy yourself one of those kids shell pools yeah. or a shallow kids pool. Go pop it in the backyard, put some warm water in there, add your bubbles in and make Make it into a really fun play session. So get those bubbles out, get your puppy or your dog playing with some bubbles in a way that's really, really fun um, and enjoyable for yeah. them. Now a trick we use here um, when you're washing at home as well is when you have filled the bubbles into the bath, use a loofah or an exfoliating glove. These are two amazing tools that will help form more bubbles onto the dog, but allow you to scrub deeply into their coat um, to get really the gets, best effect. Yeah. Gets it through the coat much more easily than just hand washing. Um, and these are great, great tools. We use them here every day. So highly recommend these at home rather than just using your hands. Um, and a big tip that we can't stress enough about is to avoid the eyes as much as possible. Uh, with the faces, it's really important to be really careful um, with putting soap around their eyes. Even if it is all natural, you still wanna be careful. So just really Really being very careful around the eye area. Um, with gunky eyes, I know it's really common with dogs. So even just use, you can get yourself some eye wipes. Um, using these daily on the dog is super important. Otherwise, they tend to build up quite a, a hard, strong amount around the eyes. Um, and it's really difficult to then get off. So if you're doing it daily, it avoids that sort of contact there and any sort of rashing that it might cause. Um, another really important part of grooming, which probably um, it's the scariest part of grooming for all dogs is actually the drying part of grooming. Um, it is really important to dry your dogs off properly. Uh, letting your dogs air dry will open up more of an opportunity for matting to occur. So after your bath, um, it is really important to do the best that you can to dry your dog. Um, we love here as well, chamois. <laughs> so like what you do with your car, um, we chamois the dogs after their bath. It, you can use a towel. Um, but we do find these absorb the water better, so it, it will help you before you get to the drying part to soak out as much water as possible. Um, one thing as a puppy or dogs that aren't used to is getting them used to at home that noise of the hair dryer. That is definitely one of the scariest parts. It's when a lot of the dogs freak out the most during the grooming is when that blast of dryer comes out and that noise is very loud to them. Um, we have special headbands that we actually cover their ears with while we're drying. Oh, a snoot. A snoot. Um, and that just blocks that noise a bit more. Hi, so this is Rika and I've been grooming for 13, 14 years. <laughs> Um, so yes, with the drying, obviously, like I said, using the hairdryer is super important, um, which then needs to be followed by a really good brush out, again, to avoid those knots. Do not brush your dog at home on the floor. If you do it on the floor, they will run away. Um, they do know with their owners that they can get away with more too. Um, we groom, obviously, all the dogs up on a table. Now, dogs are a little bit scared of heights. So if you can get your dog up on a surface before you start brushing, it is gonna stop them from running away and give you more of an opportunity to work on the areas that need brushing. Uh, Rika's gonna demo how she can hold a hairdryer and brush a dog at the same time. So I usually put dryer around the neck. So you can use both hands. Then make sure you use not hot, but warm. Warm can change the hair shape, so it's easier to brush out. Then you find the skin, make sure you find the skin. After you find it, you start to brush. And that hair dryer will allow the hair to spread apart for you to find the skin. Yes. Um, one of the biggest issues we see here is the top of the hair is beautiful and curly, However, the bottom layer is what has matted up because with the brushing, without using this technique, that bottom layer does mat up. Um, and then that's when you come to the groomers and lo and behold, they have to be shaved. So yes, they are dogs that don't shed their hair, which is fantastic because no one wants hair everywhere at home. However, the dogs do shed their hair, but it just goes back into the coat. As a puppy, this will not happen. They've got their puppy coat, but from around 10 months to one year as that adult coat starts to come through, you'll notice how much more difficult it is to groom. 
So with that hair, it sheds back into the coat. And if you're not brushing that dead hair out of the coat, I will show you what happens. You have this beautiful curly coat on one side, and then you have a formed matted coat underneath. It's like, a, it's like a felt, like you actually can't pull that apart very easily. And a lot of oodle coats are a lot like sheep wool, like it is thick and it's curly and it is a bit of a nightmare. So we can't stress enough about that brushing and spreading the coat apart and really brushing out the bottom layer to not have this happen to your dog's coat. Um, it also obviously can be very itchy for the dog and very uncomfortable. Um, one thing that's really bad with dogs is, I know with a lot of oodles you may notice the ears also get really matted. Um, this can be very dangerous for the dog if it's not cared for. Um, it can cause a thing called a hematoma when we do shave off the matted part from the ear. Basically, with the ear being so tightly matted, there's no blood flow that's running through the dog's ear. It's all been cut off due to the matting. So if we shave it off, that blood quickly starts running through the ear again and it can cause a hematoma, which is the bleeding from the edges of the ears. If you find knots like next to skin, don't try anything at home. Take vet or grooming salon to do it. Not a professional. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it does cause, yeah. you will see bleeding at the end of the ear. A really common thing is you'll see the dog shaking its head a lot. So after the groomer, if you notice constant shaking, you really need to be keeping an eye on those tips of the ears to make sure no bleeding or irritations have occurred there. We really recommend your slicker style brushes. Now these are little wire parts from the brush there and that will help get to the bottom of your dog's skin. There's different types of them. Um, there are harder ones and softer ones, so depending if you've got different coats that are thicker and harder to get through, or you've got a puppy coat, you might get a softer bristled one. But this does predominantly a lot of the work for you because it does go right down to the skin. However, you just have to be very gentle with these. We say hold it with three fingers because you don't want to be damaging the dog's skin either by aggressively brushing out the hair um, and those bristles causing infections or rashes on the dog's skin. If you have the blow dryer separating the hair, that will really help as well uh, with short, doing that. Short just brushes. short little brushes. There's no need to aggressively do this. Um, another brush that uh, if you do not have a curly haired or a long haired dog is this amazing brush called the Zoom Groom brush. So it's made of rubber, so it's very soft on the dog. So any dogs like your Staffies, your Labradors, your Bulldogs, um, I have these for my cats as well, which is absolutely amazing. And with these, how it does work, it basically magnets the hair off your dog and takes all that dead hair out. And one thing I would also like to talk about, which I'm sure you all do, is going to the beach <laughs> with your oodles. So going to the beach is one of the biggest ways that your dog gets matted. Swimming in general. Swimming in general, but that salty water doesn't help either or the sand. So it is perfectly fine for your dog to go swimming at the beach. We highly recommend it. They love it. However, it's what we do afterwards. So all these techniques we've gone through already, it is really important to rinse your dog after the beach. You want to get all that sand, all that salt water out of the dog's coat. Um, so that that doesn't form any of that matting. Um, and you also then want to dry your dog like we spoke about and give it a good brush out. If you can't do the whole dog, just focus on those key areas. Focus on those ears that get matted. Uh, we see the tail get matted a lot and those legs. So if you can't get the whole dog's body, um, just focus on those areas and that way it will avoid a lot of that matting um, for after the beach trip. These things will really help your dog's experience with the groomer. We really don't like it when they come in shaking and scared. We want it to be a really enjoyable time for them because who doesn't love being pampered? Um, so that's what we want to touch on with the beach. And before I move on, Rika's favourite tool with the brushing is the, the comb. This is going to be your lifesaver to get a comb with your dog. So let's say you brush this part and after you brush, use comb to make sure there's no knot left. 
So the comb is to run through after you brush an area. So this will basically tell you if you've missed knots in the dog's hair because obviously the comb won't run through it. Um, so if you can second guess yourself with the comb after you've brushed, you can see that the dog's coat will be nice and clear. If it gets caught, obviously there are more knots in there. So to go back to the slicker brush and keep working on that area. So the tangling spray will make hair smooth. So maybe it's easier to detangle. Yeah, it won't get out the knots. You still need to put in the work, but it will help soften that area to work on the knots as well. A great little tool that um, Reaper swears by um, is this soap here. If you can see that name of it there, what this soap is really useful for is oily ears. It is called Creamy Nutmeg and it's by Chubb. So we have um, as well, if any of you are oodle owners or long eared dog owners, they do get oily very quickly. A lot of people do need to treat them quite often because of ear infections, which leaves, it leaves the ear really oily. Spaniels. Yeah, copper well. spaniels, any really long eared dogs. The reason why they get those infections is because due to the long floppy ears, it really closes off their ear holes. And if they're not dried properly, they stay very moist um, and all that yeast build up is what causes an infection. And so it's not nice. Yes. Um, so this soap here, you just literally wash it onto the dog's ear while it's wet um, and it will remove a lot more of those oils than if you're just using a natural sh like dog shampoo. Um, which speaking of ear infections is one of the biggest things we do see in grooming. Some dogs don't, if you look inside their ears, you can't even tell it's infected. There's no gunk in there. It's not very red. But one thing to look out for is the smell. <laughs> I'm not sure if anyone smelt an ear infection. Um, we describe it as a very yeasty type smell. Um, it is quite strong and sometimes you can't smell it when the dog's ear is down. But by lifting up and checking your dog's ear daily, you'll be able to look out for that sort of smell. Um, aside from that, is looking out for a lot of redness. Um, and in the worst case scenario, it is filled with gunk. And by that point, I mean, it's very important to go to the vet and get that checked out because you don't want your dog to have an ear infection. They will shake their heads a lot too, back to that shaking. Scratch it, scratch it rub it on things. Um, you can avoid, not avoid, but help manage these with things like ear wipes. Um, you can use those daily on the dog too. One thing we use here is the Epioptic cleaning tool, which I think a lot of people Most do know. Yeah, vets we use that. Too. Yeah, they use it for every dog in grooming. So they just put a little bit of Epioptic onto a little makeup pad or a little cotton ball, whatever you have at home, and you just wipe out the ear and you'll notice a lot of the brown gunk coming off on there. So even if your dog doesn't have an infection, by doing this um, constantly, either daily, two days, whatever suits your needs, um, it will keep it clean to try and avoid those ear infections in the future. Once a dog gets an ear infection, unfortunately it's then prone to getting them constantly. So you do want to keep maintaining that ear to avoid that happening. Yeah, some dogs develop what are called polyps in their ear um, and uh, yeah, that's when um, you know, the ear infections can become chronic. If your dog does get an ear infection and your vet pops them on antibiotics, make sure you do that full course of the antibiotics. Don't stop when the symptoms stop. Um, it is important to do the full amount so that all of, um, you know, everything that they're trying to kill in the ear is completely gone and dead. Another fun thing we do here, um, which actually is really important for your dog, is tooth brushing. So um, you can just get all different types of teeth, uh, tooth pastes for dogs, um, which our girls use here is this one. It's an S Dog one. Um, but what we do highly recommend, I know a lot of places sell toothbrushes that sort of look like a human toothbrush. Um, it's really invasive for the dog, just like a stick poking into their mouth constantly. And you don't get the full effect of being able to clean right at the back. So we use this one here. It's called a veterinary finger toothbrush and it sits on the groomer's fingers and it allows them to then get right to the back of the mouth, uh, behind the teeth, on the tongue, on the gums, um, and really scrub at that plaque that's starting to build. Uh, a big thing with this though is like when we brush our teeth, it does need to be consistent. So if you go to the groomers, let's say once every six weeks and get teeth done, it's not gonna be as effective as if you try and do this daily, weekly, um, as often as possible to allow that plaque to not be forming.
Yeah, because once the plaque is formed, particularly on those canines of our dogs, it becomes very hardened. So the toothbrushing alone won't be enough to knock that plaque off if uh, you're not doing it frequently enough. So um, aim for at least a couple of times a week and you'll really help prevent dental disease in your dog, which is so common now. And expensive, we need to go to the vet and get 10 teeth pulled out. <laughs> um, other tricks, if you can't do the teeth brushing, there are different things like this. So this is a foam, it's an oral care foam, and you literally put it straight into the dog's mouth. I'll do a little, can I come out? Uh, there we go. So it's just like a foam. Oop, there we go. And <laughs> straight into the mouth. And what the dog will do is then lick it around their teeth and they'll rub it in through their teeth. So that will help a lot with breath um, if you're worried with your dog's bad breath. And the other thing which Maddie showed before is any sort of bones, long lasting chews, they're all natural ways to keep your dog's teeth clean. So if your dog doesn't usually chew things, we do recommend at least um, doing something once a week and that will naturally help clean the dog's teeth out as well. And also, um, you know, don't, um, whilst, you know, your tinned canned foods, you know, some of them are really great. You don't want to feed just that soft food all the time. You do want to feed either some kibble or some bones or chews that will help knock that plaque off. Because if you're only using the soft food, then there's nothing to um, knock that plaque back off and clean their teeth afterwards. One of the big things why I like to recommend a little bit of kibble in the dog's diet, that will also help with that as well. Um, another thing we wanted to talk about, which uh, Rika does see very often, more so now all year round, it used to be more summer, is grass seeds. So with your long-coated dogs especially, grass seeds can be one of the most annoying things for an owner to have to deal with because once the grass seed uh, goes inside the dog's, uh, let's say between the paws, behind the ears, what's another spot you see a lot of grass seeds? legs in the legs a few in the chest as well um, once it's buried in there deep and the skin's closed over it you will need to go to the vet and you will need to get it removed um, and also deal with the infection that's been caused by it so it can also travel so if they if a grass seed has gone in the paw of your dog they can actually travel and move underneath the dog's skin so if you do notice a you know strange redness between the toes and you think something might be lodged in there it could be a grass seed and it's definitely worth the trip to the vet yes if you're going to keep your dog's long coat which we have a dog's coat long um, which is absolutely fine to do it is really important that you are at least once a week checking through your dog's skin checking their paws because you don't know what's going on underneath all that hair and, and again, it's, you know that's obviously important for finding ticks as well yeah um, fleas all sorts of like little um, cuts and things on the dog the way that you would want to do that again going back to that um, going back to that massage starting off on your dog's shoulders and just creeping your fingers along the whole of your dog and almost giving them a massage but you're feeling every little part of them and working your way along the dog until you've checked them all over and it's good to get in the habit of doing that most days um, you know your dog will think it's a great cuddle session they'll get that massage used to handling um, and obviously it's a great way to do a health check as well yes we um we have had labradoodles come in. We had one recently, a large dog with long coat. Um, and it wasn't until we shaved the dog because of matting, we actually found minimum 15 grass seeds um, in the dog. Um, and at least three of them were really badly infected. So it's, it's no, no fault of anybody's, no fault of the owners. It's just things that are happening under that fur that you don't really think about until the dog does get shaved and then you really see what's happening underneath all that fur. Um, never be fooled by that soft curly coat on the top because there is so much happening underneath that um, can be missed very, very easily with that as well. Um, we will talk a slight bit about nail clipping. Um, before we start though, we still recommend going to the groomers or a vet clinic to get the dog's nails done. If your dog has one, just one bad experience with a nail clipper and they do get cut too short and they do bleed, 
they will never enjoy nail clipping again. Um, yeah, the trust is gone. The trust <laughs> is gone. It's never a fun time. Um, and just seeing those clippers can then scare them. So that's, if that does happen to your dog, that's where you want to do um, what I was talking about at the beginning. I think some of you may or may not have missed that. But again, not necessarily going to the full intensity and clipping your dog's nails. Even if you're not doing it yourself, you might want to buy a pair of clippers just to get your dog used to seeing the clippers. And when they see them, say good. And then following with a food treat so that we're not, you know, moving it closer to them where they're at a level where they can handle it, they're comfortable, but you're not necessarily actually going and clipping their nails, you're just getting them back to that positive association. So with the nail clipping, um, first of all, dogs with white nails, uh, it is a lot easier to do from home. Um, obviously, I don't have a demo, but if you've got a dog with white nails or any dog, they have a vein in their nail which is called a quick. Now this is the pink part of the nail that runs through. With a white dog or a clear dog's nails, obviously it's a lot easier to see where that quick ends. So you know you're not gonna cut too short and make the dog's nails bleed. Basically, um, not that anyone would fully know, but we have been explained that cutting the dog's quick or cutting their nails too short can be explained as chopping off the top of your finger. Um, a little bit is fine, it's like cutting your nails too short. If you just try and chop that whole nail off, that will be like cutting off the top of your dog's finger. I've just done a really quick on the spot diagram. But if this is your dog's, you know, the fur is here and you've got a long dog claw, the vein is right in the middle. So it's really important that when you're cutting a claw, you don't cut here. You just want to cut off that bottom bit, okay? So making sure that you're not getting in the way of that vein in the middle. Um, with the black dog's nails, it is a lot harder. Um, I'll get Reef to explain how she does that. Not that we recommend doing this too much from home, but if some people don't have a choice, um, pop on in. With the black nails, so I believe you look at the moisture that comes through as you cut it. Yes, so you cut slowly and just little by little. Little bit at a time. Don't yeah. just take one big chunk off. It's really important to just take it off very slowly, bit by bit. Then just to make it look right. <laughs> then you will see like a jelly in like in the center while you are cutting the nail. Then it means stop. So stop. the nail yeah. goes when you're looking at the end of the nail. It goes yeah. from looking like a normal bit of nail on the end to then you suddenly see this very soft little circle on the inside where the texture changes. Yeah. And that's when you know you're getting very close to the quick. So it's it's gonna be the jelly is gonna be like around here. Yeah. So so that little soft texture, the change in texture, is what coats the quick, the vein on the inside. So as soon as you see that texture change, you know to stop. Yes. Yeah. Um, but like we said, if you can come into the groomers to get that done, um, a lot of people want their dog's nails short. So the way to do that is getting the nails cut consistently. So every two to three weeks, um, that will naturally then start to push the quick down. So you can start cutting the nails shorter. If you only cut the nails, let's say once every three months, that quick is gonna be really naturally long. So you'll only ever be able to take off a tiny little bit mm. Um, point. As the nail grows, the vein grows too. Um, always as well look out for the dew claw. Not all dogs have them, but it's the tiny little wonky claw that tend to sit a little bit higher up the paw. Um, and they, if they are missed, they can start to grow and curl back into the dog's skin. So always check the dew claw and make sure that's not growing too fast as well, because that does need to be cut as well. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, if you can get your dog clipped at least every minimum eight weeks it's going to save you having a shave off every time um, and be able to have your dog's coat at a length that you want to have i mean it's why we get these teddy bear fluffy dogs because we want them to be teddy bear and fluffy but they do take a lot of work um, so we do hope that we've helped you guys out a bit today with being able to maintain that from home um, and please feel free to contact the Doe Bondi store for anything you need, any questions you'd like to ask us again, um, we're happy to help. Uh, if you have any questions about um, how to help your puppy get used to grooming, feel free to um, send me a message on my Instagram page, Maddie's Dog School, um, if I can help you out with any grooming tips and desensitising your dog to grooming. 
All right, guys. Thank you so much. Um, we'll be back next week for how to deal with your dogs during COVID-19 and how they're going to cope with going back to work.